you. This is. On the deck of a tattered warship. Saul and Orovia were dumbfounded as they watched Roy, who had dialed several phone worms in front of them, and then quietly put down the phone worm in their hands. They were all dumbfounded and could not say a word. What's wrong? Roy let out a sigh of relief, but a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. He was right. None of the bunch of bastards in the military academy refused his request. To be honest, even Roy himself didn't expect it to go so smoothly. No need to spend too much talk, no one questioned his decision at all. It was the same as when they followed themselves out of the siege on the battlefield without hesitation. This kind of heartwarming feeling, let Roy really feel the warmth of home. Listening to Roy's natural tone, Orovia and Saul both showed a wry smile in unison. They glanced at each other, and they all saw the shock in each other's eyes. It's nothing, I'm just amazed at how you can make all the military academies obey your orders. Saul shook his head and sighed. His face was a little pale, and he had lost an arm abruptly, even if he was a monster with such a terrifying physique like a monster, he couldn't bear it. As a former military school student, Saul knows very well that even the classmates of the military academy in the same period seem to have friendly relations with each other, but in fact they are in secret competition and undercurrents. After all, those who can enter the military academy to receive education and training are a group of talented students. Maybe they can still maintain a certain degree of friendship in the military academy. But after graduation, this illusion will be completely shredded. To be honest, everyone wants to climb up. And there are only a small handful of official positions with real power and status. A radish and a pit. Saul has seen more than once the military academy graduates who had been in the same dormitory fought against each other for a powerful official position, are used knives over and under the covers. This is a very real problem. Even in a relatively more united organization like the military, absolute interests are paramount. But this scene of Roy in front of him had abruptly subverted the relationship he could imagine. Has the world become so fast? Because the previous military academy students have never experienced a real war. They have never seen someone like Roy. At this moment, Orovia suddenly said solemnly. She looked at Roy with an inexplicable meaning in her eyes. Listening to Orovia's words, Saul was stunned and suddenly realized. He got it. Indeed, previous military school graduates. None of them had experienced a real war during the military school period. Their so called practical combat training, compared with the Marine Ford defense battle that shocked the world, is simply a plaything like a child's play. Only the war of blood and fire can truly temper a person's will and beliefs. And the same, only the cruel and bloody battle that truly delivered each other's lives. Only then can we hone the cohesion of a team. The seventh cadets of the military academy headed by Roy, now it seems. The cohesion between all of them, it has completely surpassed any division of Marine now. Beyond personal interests, power and status beyond reality. Each of them trusts Roy's leadership so much, and is even willing to entrust his life to the latter. This is terrifying. Both Saul and Orovia couldn't help but come up with such an idea in their minds. The military academy graduates will undoubtedly hold important positions in all major departments of the military. And the seventh military academy, when they gradually grow up, served various important positions in the headquarters and major branches. By that time, Roy, the head of their horse as the boss of Zahn. What a terrible influence and right to speak will have in the justice forces of the entire world. Roy chuckled at this moment. This matter is not as complicated as you think. He seemed to see through the inner thoughts of Orovia and Saul. Because what I asked them to do was something that was in line with the justice in everyone's hearts. Their goal is not to fight against the headquarters, let alone stop the buster call from happening. I just asked them to protect O'Hara's civilians to retreat safely. The launch of buster call will inevitably affect countless innocent civilians. The country can be destroyed, but the species cannot be destroyed. I can't, and they can't just let buster call kill everyone on O'Hara. At least, as a Marine, protecting innocent civilians is our most basic responsibility. Roy said lightly, the moment the voice fell. Both Orovia and Saul were very moved, yes. As a qualified Marine, protecting the weak and innocent civilians is their most basic responsibility. But this seems ordinary, how many Marines can really have this kind of consciousness and take action for it? Very few. But Roy was able to do this, even on the verge of violating military regulations thought of here, Saul couldn't help but sighed. Ms. Zephyr really didn't misunderstand the person. Roy shook his head and said, this is just the most basic thing. But this O'Hara, 
he slowly raised his head and raised his eyes to look into the distance. Distance, an island exuding pale green has gradually emerged from the extreme end. West Blue Archaeological Holy Land, O'Hara. Roy frowned uncontrollably, clenching his fists. Saul and Orovia also seemed to realize the worries deep in Roy's heart, and fell silent. O'Hara arrived, what they have to face next. Is the most important. Saul, go ahead at full speed. Time is running out. Roy looked down at the timetable and said solemnly. Saul nodded solemnly. Sailing again, under the agitation of the wind and waves, the dilapidated warship headed towards O'Hara like a sharp arrow. But in three minutes, the warship reached the coastline of O'Hara. Lead the way, Nicole Orovia. Roy stepped onto O'Hara's ground and said slowly. Orovia looked anxious too, and didn't say much, and quickly stepped forward. Um? But when they were ready to set off, Saul stopped suddenly. Roy and Orovia turned back. Saul? A smile appeared on Saul's face. I will stay here. Roy was taken aback, and instantly understood. This guy knows that their time is running out, Buster Call's army is estimated to arrive in a short time, and Roy and the others will need a lot of time to evacuate the civilians. Saul wants to stay and delay time. No, you can't appear in Marine's sight, otherwise all the false evidence I have done before will be in vain. Roy analyzed the situation decisively, and shook his head in a deep voice. The reply he submitted to Sengoku Admiral was that they had killed both of them. In other words, Marine could never find that Orovia and Saul were still alive. Saul gritted his teeth, but in time. Roy waved his hand and interrupted him. It's okay in terms of time. The rescue fleets of the major branches of West Blue have almost arrived. Saul saw that Roy's face was so firm, he didn't say much, he could only trust Roy's judgment. The three set off quickly all the way through the dense jungle of O'Hara Island. But when they were hundreds of meters away from the tree of all-knowing. Boom! A earth-shaking cannon fired the sky far behind them red. Orovia and Saul both froze at the same time, their faces pale suddenly. The bombardment of Buster Call, here we go. Don't stay. Roy urged calmly, boom. Can't care too much, Roy's figure flickered directly, kicking the gate of the tree of all-knowledge library directly. In the tree of omniscience, many scholars who were panicked by the sudden shelling were already in a mess, but suddenly their eyes flashed and they saw a marine boy wearing rear admiral uniforms appearing in front of them. Marine. It's marine. Run away. One of them, headed by his old hair in a scholar's robe, exclaimed. But he only saw a flash in front of him, the boy marine had appeared in front of him like a ghost, and squeezed his throat with one hand. Dr. Karaha, calm down, I'm here to save people. This old man was Dr. Kuraha, the librarian of the Tree of All-Knowing. Ph.D. At this time, an anxious female voice rang from the door. Dr. Kuraha was taken aback. Orovia. Roy opened his hand lightly, and Dr. Kuraha gasped for breath, but there was a touch of joy on his face. Orovia. You are still alive. Great. Orovia shook her head, her eyes reddened. Doctor. The order of the world government has been issued, and Marine has also launched a buster call to O'Hara. The shelling outside. She did not continue to speak, but the meaning behind the voice shocked all the scholars present. The atmosphere is terribly suppressed, everyone fell into a bottomless silence, their bodies trembling visibly. In the entire library of the Tree of All Knowledge, the scholars were dull and desperately stiff in place, motionless like a statue of a statue. The slight noise of the cannons coming from the outside world is getting more and more intense. Even faintly can hear the tragic crying and wailing of the civilians who fled. The three words Buster Call came out, everyone present reacted immediately. As knowledgeable scholars, they naturally know what the three words, Buster Call, actually mean. After all, as this day coming, Dr. Karaha's gloomy, wrinkled face gradually showed a touch of misery and loneliness, and said with a wry smile. Other scholars also reacted, sighing bitterly. As many scholars who study the historical text, they are naturally very clear in their minds what will happen to the world government once their own research on the historical text is discovered by the world government. The world government has already enacted a law that prohibits anyone from studying the text of history. Buster Call. Dr. Karaha sighed. I really didn't expect that. A scholar who studies history would be called a demon. It seems that we are really the masters the biggest taboo and secret in the eyes of the world government. Boom. At this moment, suddenly a deafening roar came from above the head. Horrible vibrations keep appearing, 
Even the ceiling and marble above the head are shaking off with dust and rubble. Damn it! They have started bombarding the tree of all knowing. The classics here, Dr. Karaha. The scholars hurried into a mess, exclaiming desperately. Let's all go, Dr. Karaha. Stay here, we will all die. Oro Via's eyes were red and authentic, and his expression was extremely anxious. No, you can't escape. Roy, who had been silent all the time, suddenly said in a deep voice. As soon as this statement came out, both Orovia and Saul's face suddenly changed. With an unbelievable look, the two of them suddenly turned their heads to stare at Roy, who looked calm. Why? Roy? Don't you want to save the people here? Suddenly, Saul hammered heavily with one hand on the ground in anger, smashing the ground beneath his feet into a huge cobweb-like crack. Countless rocks splashed past his eyes, but Roy looked at Dr. Karaha without changing his face. Yes, Roy Rear Admiral is right. We scholars cannot escape. Dr. Karaha's expression calmed down at this moment, and he smiled indifferently. Speaking, he bowed deeply to Roy, and said respectfully in an extremely grateful tone. Roy Rear Admiral, the old man knows that you have taken a huge risk in order to come to O'Hara. He glanced at Saul and Orovia whose faces were full of frost and scars, and he had probably guessed their experience in his heart. It is rumored that you are an idol worshipped and followed by countless young people in Marine, and a role model for them to follow. This rumor is true. Dr. Karaha said solemnly, Thank you for everything you have done for Ohara. Next, let us bear the consequences we should have suffered. After speaking, he smiled, his eyes filled with indifference to see through life and death. Other scholars also reacted, coincidentally. They all tidied up the scholar's robe representing knowledge and law on their bodies, and then stood calmly in place, without any desire to escape. Saul was shocked. This group of scholars. No fear of death can be seen on each face, some are just calm and free and easy. What the hell is going on? Saul yelled frantically in his heart. Orovia stared at the scene in a daze, suddenly clenched his fists, and shouted angrily. Why? We can't escape. Dr. Karaha smiled at Oro via at this time. Nor should we run away. If our group of scholars escapes, then the entire Ohara will perish with our escape. Even if any one of us survives, countless civilians on and under Ohara will be burdened with endless pursuits by the world government for this matter. In order to conceal the traces of our research on the historical text, it is impossible for the world government to spare any scholar. But the civilians who have lived in Ohara for generations are innocent. They don't even understand the text of the history. We cannot be so selfish, for our own lives, to ignore the lives of countless civilians. Perhaps, if our group of scholars all die here, the people of Ohara will barely have a chance to survive. With the help and cover of Roy Rear Admiral, they can also find a brand new home in this vast sea. Orovia was stunned, she understood instantly. Yes, the crimes of scholars doomed them to death. If they try to resist, instead, it will affect the innocent lives of O'Hara civilians. Only they all died here, world government and marine. Perhaps it is possible to spare the lives of other ordinary people. Dr. Karaha, then, let's start telling the civilians to start fleeing. Roy's voice interrupted the deathly silence in the court. In the tone of his voice, there was an extremely complex emotion. To be honest, if it can be saved, he hopes to save it. But the world government has issued a death order, and Marine has even launched a buster call. Even if he uses the only resources in the military academy, it is impossible to hide all the scholars present in Haiti and rescue it. Every one of O'Hara's historians is recorded. Without confirming their bodies, it is impossible for Marine to give up. Facing a behemoth like world government, Roy is still very powerless. This is the truth, very cruel thing. He is not a traverser with cheats and invincible as soon as he appears. He is just an ordinary person who works a little bit, a little bit more self-discipline, and a little bit more lucky than others. He has a clear conscience to save O'Hara's civilians as much as possible. Although the scholars of O'Hara said that they were only studying the real history, they had violated the forbidden zone of the law after all, and no one could save them. Dr. Karaha nodded. At this time, has regained the same determination and indifference as before. His body exudes a kind of calmness and calmness unique to scholars. He took out a public phone worm and began to send messages to the broadcasters on the entire O'Hara Island. Next moment, the civilians who were rushing to escape from O'Hara. Those people who are constantly crying for help and crying amidst the artillery fire in the sky. All heard Dr. Karaha's voice. All O'Hara Islanders, I am Dr. Karaha, the curator of the Tree of All-Knowing Library. 
Today, it will be the last time I have a conversation with you all. In response to the crimes committed by our scholars, the world government and naval headquarters have launched a buster call operation on the island where O'Hara is located. Sorry, this is a disaster brought by our scholars. At this moment, all of our historians, beg you all to start fleeing, towards the east coastline of O'Hara Island. There, having said that, Dr. Kuraha looked at Roy subconsciously. The latter nodded towards him. Dr. Kuraha smiled and continued. Marines warships stationed in the major branches of West Blue will serve as your last refuge, leading you to escape. After speaking, Dr. Kuraha directly hung up the telephone worm's broadcast communication. At the same time, outside the tree of omniscience. The entire chaotic O'Hara Island, after hearing Dr. Kuraha's broadcast, countless people were all taken aback. Then, no orders from anyone, they began to flee frantically towards the coastline east of O'Hara. Some people want to stay, they were reluctant to live in their whole life home. But the cannonballs that kept falling above their heads, shook the earth trembling, and blasted into the sky with flames. But it cut off their last thoughts, and this time. On the southern coastline of O'Hara, ten huge marine battleships, which are huge, like steel fortresses, have already docked there. The heavy artillery was frantically vomiting flames, and the originally dark barrels had been completely burnt red. Tens of thousands of marine elites jumped off the deck in a dense number, and then rushed toward the deepest part of O'Hara Island like a tide. A tall figure stood like a rock on the leading warship. The aura is deep and terrifying, with murderous aura. Damn it! Marine from the West Blue Branches, what are they doing? Are they going to fight Buster Call? Akainu's face was gloomy and authentic. He dialed a phone call. Sangoku Admiral, things seem to have changed a little bit. His voice hasn't completely fallen off yet. Another military phone worm has rang. It is a public communication of the military's buster call. My colleagues, I am Naval Headquarters Rear Admiral Roy, codenamed Blue Tiger. Roy's voice came from the public channel abruptly. I have controlled all the scholars in O'Hara within the Tree of All-Knowing Library. All of them have been arrested, without missing one, they will be captured with no effort. Now I officially announce this news to my colleagues. Please stop the shelling. After the innocent civilians have completely evacuated and escaped, the military will station in O'Hara again, arrest the scholars, destroy all research materials, and complete this mission. Please stop shelling. I have notified my colleagues in all major branches of West Blue to lead at least 30 warships to help civilians evacuate and escape, so as not to endanger the innocent. Attention, stop shelling, we are Marine. Protecting civilians is our primary duty. Naval Headquarters Rear Admiral Roy, join in. The sound falls, all of a sudden, hideous veins appeared on Akainu's forehead. Attention, stop shelling, we are Marine. Protecting civilians is our primary duty. Naval Headquarters Rear Admiral Roy, join in. A voice that was so determined and deafening came from the phone bug. This moment, not only Akainu, who is the executive officer of Buster Call this time. All Marine departments involved in this operation. There are also a group of Marine senior executives in this department. I heard Roy's voice. Naval Headquarters, Marine Ford. Marshall's Mansion. Naval Headquarters Marshall Kong quietly listened to Roy's voice in the phone bug. After a long silence, he suddenly laughed. What a kind of kid. I hope you won't regret the decision you made this time, Roy. He slowly put down the phone bug in his hand, got up from his seat, and walked slowly to the window. Outside the window, it's a blue sky like a wash of blue sky is the boundless white clouds, it is a seagull flag soaring in the sky wanton, as if shining brightly. Marshal Sora suddenly flashed a thought in his mind. No matter what consequences Roy made today will bring him, but at least his move makes Marines' absolute justice no longer so false. Headquarters, Admiral Office. Boom. The phone worm was smashed to pieces by Sengoku angrily. His chest was panting hurriedly, as if there was a wave of nameless anger in his chest. There was no problem with everything Roy did. But just because of the problem, that can't get out of the problem, it makes Sengoku, the so-called the resourceful general, feel that there is no way to start. It's not impossible to save civilians, but the most critical question is. This time the task was directly issued by the world government. Whether or not this task can be completed, perfectly, will directly determine whether you can take over the position of the empty old man and be promoted to the new marine marshal. He also has his own justice, if possible. He also wants to save innocent civilians. But the O'Hara incident, the interests and political turmoil involved, are far from being comparable to the tens of thousands of civilians in O'Hara. 
As a soldier, the primary goal is to perform the tasks of superiors. At this point, Sengoku knew very well in his mind. These past years, he did the same. But Roy's arbitrary behavior, this time forced Sengoku to the edge of the cliff abruptly. He announced that he had controlled all the scholars of the Ohara Rebellion, and no one was left out. This also directly blocked the essence of Buster Call. Buster Call is a brutal attack that burns everything. Everything within the designated area is the target of Buster Call. But Roy announced that, he also pressed it down with the big hat of protecting civilians. Sangoku seemed very passive. Keep attacking? Continue to order the bombardment of Ohara? Doesn't that mean publicly acknowledging that the so called justice marine will slaughter innocent civilians unscrupulously? Sangoku couldn't bear such an eternal infamy. Thought of here, Sangoku angrily dialed a phoneworm communication. Blue. Hey? A low voice with a clear and cheerful smile came from the phoneworm. Sangoku yelled at her mouth, Zephyr, you bastard. How did you teach students? You know that too. Roy is so disturbed. How can the tasks of the world government on my side be carried out? Zephyr laughed. Unscrupulous voice came out. Ha 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 Sangoku, you are too sensitive. Isn't that good? The task is also completed. You can let Sakazuki go directly in. Ohara will lead the people, and even save a lot of shells. Roy did you a great favor this time, remember to give him a sum of exploits when you look back. Brew, Sengoku hung up the phoneworm communication with smoke in his head. At this point, he has no choice, Roy's nose has been completely led away. Although saving the civilians, the guilt and anxiety in his heart eased a lot. But he didn't like the feeling of being led by the nose. Sakazuki, this time the old man will give you the whole task. Um, he paused, and said coldly to the military phone bug. As much as possible, search for historians who may get in among the civilians. Sakazuki Vice Admiral, what shall we do next? The southern coastline of Ohara, one of them, Marine Commodore, asked respectfully at Akainu, whose face was so pale in front of him. Akainu's eyebrows were twisted tightly, and his face was gloomy. It's impossible to continue shelling, even he. There is no reason to do such a thing because Roy has shown with his dignity and military rank. He has controlled all historians. Avoid the possibility of hiding scholar fugitives on the escape boat is totally untenable. For the charge of wantonly massacre of innocent civilians, it is him that Akainu Sakazuki can't bear righteousness either. You set off to the eastern coastline, check for suspects as much as possible. The crew of this warship followed the old man to the tree of all-knowing. Akainu gritted his teeth, and finally said coldly. At this moment, the tree of omniscience. Seeing Roy slowly put down the phone worm in front of him, everyone present was very moved. Inside the library, with the exception of Saul, a rough man of the giant tribe, everyone else is a historian with a very high IQ. Naturally, they knew very well in their hearts how much the news that Roy announced just now meant to the whole Ohara. Roy Rear Admiral, thank you for everything you have done for Ohara. Dr. Karaha suddenly knelt in front of Roy with a bang and gave the latter a very grand and respectful gift. History may be covered in dust, but the people of Ohara will never forget your great kindness. He sighed in gratitude, his expression extremely solemn. Not only him, other historians are also one after another. One by one, knelt on the ground, the red eyes paid Roy the highest respect. What Roy said just now, this has indeed saved the lives of tens of thousands of civilians in Ohara. He completely blocked the operation of Marine Buster Call minimize the loss of this disaster that was destined to be cruel and bloody. And he did, fundamentally, it did not get any benefits. Do not, he never received any substantive benefits. It is also very likely that this will offend the senior officials of the world government and marine. But he did it anyway, resolutely. Roy shook his head mockingly, and said softly. Everyone, I'm sorry, with my current ability, there is really no way to save you. Ohara and the scholars smiled disapprovingly. From the moment we decided to study the historical text, we anticipated this scene today. Yeah, Roy Rear Admiral, you don't have to worry about it at all. This is our destiny. History is always full of darkness, and it is destined to pay the price of blood if you want to unearth the light truth in the dark. Such an ending is already pretty good for us old guys. Everyone smiled and said, the atmosphere suddenly became less tense. But Saul looked distressed and his eyes were flushed. The outside artillery fire has gradually stopped. The whole world seemed to be extremely quiet and peaceful at this moment. Saul, go, please. At this moment, 
Orovia suddenly smiled and said this. Saul was taken aback, just about to speak, but was directly interrupted by Orovia. Don't think too much for me, I can return to Ohara, even if I die here, there is no regret. She said that she gave Roy a grateful smile, her eyes gradually filled with crystal tears. Saul saw her look decisive, and knew that he couldn't persuade her at all. He gritted his teeth, and the huge figure suddenly rushed out of the library of the Tree of All Knowledge. Orovia also has a daughter who is only eight years old. She wants him to keep her safe. Roy didn't stop, just watched Saul leave quietly. He can't go, he must stay, only in this way can I ensure that my declaration is accurate and true. Huge library, become extremely quiet again. A group of historians seemed to be aware of something, and stood up from the ground. Ohara, this archaeological sacred site that has existed for countless years. Will be ruined today. When I think of this idea. Their hearts are trembling, but at this moment. They laughed wantonly. At least, the young marine rear admiral in front of him rescued the civilians of Ohara. This is enough, isn't it? They glanced at each other. A free and easy smile appeared on his face, they are very old. The waste is no longer tough, but they will still finish this last journey. Join Ohara, the archaeological sacred site. Then, finally. Roy Rear Admiral, let us give you a trivial gift. Dr. Kuraha suddenly smiled. Roy was stunned, his face suddenly pale. Puff. Dr. Kuraha suddenly spit out a mouthful of blood. More than him, other historians also vomited dark red blood. This is. Poison? We knew this day would come a long time ago. In order to avoid trouble, we hid a potent poison in the dentures. We die, it doesn't matter. But at least, all of us died in front of you, and at least we'll help you wash away a little suspicion, right? If you can make your military rank higher, that would be a blessing. Dr. Karaha smiled hard. No one escapes, no one complains. This is silent and tragic. They chose to be buried with Ohara. Blood gradually filled Roy's feet and splashed all over his body. His heart is extremely cold. Getting closer. A kainu led thousands of marines running through the jungle at an astonishing speed. In just a few minutes, the huge tree of omniscience gradually became clear in their sight. At a certain moment, suddenly, a kainu's face was sour and stopped. A thin figure, a figure covered with blood, slowly walked out of the broken door of the library. The wind is very strong, blowing on the boy. His blood red cloak of justice crackled. Damn. Roy, what did you do? Akainu said angrily. Roy raised his head, giving him a cold look in his eyes. The cold eyes without emotional ups and downs made Akainu look cold all over. Report to Sakazuki Vice Admiral, I have killed all historians in Ohara, on the spot. Roy said. Finished, boom, behind him. That towering, simple, magnificent tree of omniscience, there was a terrifying explosion. The flames soaring into the sky linger in the sky. Looking at the dazzling and dazzling fire in front of him, Akainu's expression was stiff. Roy Rear Admiral, do you know what you are doing? Akainu's face was gloomy and cold. He waved his hand, and the many marines behind him rushed towards the omniscient tree that had already lit a fire. In the sky full of flames and fire, the shaky light made his stern face look extremely gloomy. Roy raised his hand and wiped the bloodline on his face. Sakazuki Vice Admiral, I'm just performing a task. I was also a member of Buster Call, so I have the obligation to eliminate Ohara's devil. Anyway, isn't that the order of the military department? In order to prevent the information from leaking out and to prevent historians from escaping, this is the safest way. Akainu frowned. Roy in front of him always made him feel a sense of anxiety. It's too abnormal, he met Roy many times. But he had never seen such an indifferent expression on Roy's face. At this moment, among them, a marine commodore who entered the tree of all knowledge appeared in front of a kainu like a ghost, raised his hand in salute and said solemnly. Report Sakazuki Vice Admiral, there are no more people living in the tree of all knowing. We have confirmed that all historians registered on Ohara's list have died. Most of the research materials in the tree of all knowledge were burned in the explosion and flames just now. In this case, even if we try our best to rescue them, it is estimated that there will be no good results. Akainu's eyes narrowed. He waved his hand for Commodore to step back, then fixed his gaze on Roy again. Very well. Roy Rear Admiral, this time the mission, you completed it very well. He suddenly said coldly. Let's go, there is no need to rescue the research materials, all the research materials of Ohara must be buried here. Akainu said this, 
a thick black smoke gradually emerged from the body. The extremely hot, suffocating temperature swarmed from his fist, ah. The crimson light seemed to swallow everything. He took a step forward, the right arm turned into scarlet hot lava, roaring out like a mad dragon. Boom. The scorching hot lava brushed Roy's cheeks and slammed into the majestic and majestic tree of omniscience. Next moment. The earth-shaking explosion suddenly blasted the waves, and the terrifying light of magma and flames haunted the entire sky. Crimson, as if became the background color of the entire Ohara. Akainu retracted his fist, looked at Roy, whose expression in front of him did not change at all, did not speak, turned and left with the army. Go to the eastern coastline. At the same time, some kilometers away from the eastern coastline of Ohara, a huge figure holding a crying girl in his hands, is running frantically on the ground. The huge figure has only one arm. He 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 he, Robin, stop crying, your mother asked me to save you. Saul cautiously stabilized his hand, and tried to squeeze a smile on the bloodline's face, but he didn't stop at all. The little girl sitting in his hands looked about eight or nine years old, thin and wearing a dirty dress. Long black hair, shoulder length, bronze skin. Nico Robin, the biological daughter of Nicole Orovia, is also the only person in Ohara who survives to interpret the text of history. At a certain moment, boom! There was an earth-shattering explosion from far behind. The movement was terrifying. Even at such a long distance, Saul could clearly feel the slight tremor of the ground under his feet. Saul, who was running frantically, stopped suddenly and turned his head stiffly, a red light greeted the sky in the distance. His face suddenly became extremely pale. The tree of omniscience is gone. Roy saw this scene too, the wise she seemed to have realized something and stopped crying. Died everyone is dead, mother, PhD, and the grandfathers of many scholars in the library, are dead. The gushing out of this thought made Robin's pupils slowly dim. But at this moment, who, a long exhalation sound resounded not far in front of him. Saul's movement stiffened, and a touch of despair appeared uncontrollably on his face. Sure enough, Roy still failed to kill you, Saul. There was a cold voice, no emotions could be heard. Saul turned his head, a bitterness came to the corner of his mouth. Kuzan. I didn't expect to run into you in the end. Aokiji Kuzan, naval headquarters vice admiral, was called a monster, and stood in front of him lazily. Aokiji raised his hand and moved the blindfold. After a glance at Robin, he looked at Saul again, and said lightly. So, I'm curious, what exactly is Roy for? I didn't hesitate to risk betraying Marine and let you survive? Saul was silent. Aokiji shook his head, and icy smoke gradually emerged from his body. Saul, this little girl, should be an unregistered historian, right? His eyes gradually became cold. Saul's face changed slightly. Aokiji smiled. Sure enough, you are still the same as before, nothing has changed. You can't hide your mind. In that case, there is no way, Saul. Strands of extremely cold freezing gas turned into white smoke radiating from Aokiji's hands, and condensed into a white flag in the air. His gaze turned to Robin. Do not. Saul subconsciously hid Robin behind him, ignoring the blood on his face, and shouted hoarsely. Kuzan. She is just a little girl. It is impossible to pose a threat to anyone. Kuzan sighed. That's what happened now, Saul, what about in the future? She will grow up eventually. Wearing round sunglasses, Aokiji couldn't see any changes in his eyes. His voice permeated a kind of indifference that made Saul's whole person like an ice cellar. For the peace and stability of the whole world, this is inevitable. If you let her live, maybe one day it will lead to a catastrophe. Saul's face became stiff, but he gritted his teeth and shouted. But, is this your justice? To slaughter indiscriminately? Are you proud of Marine's action this time? This is too weird. You know better than anyone that world government is killing a hundred. They don't even hesitate to wipe out the entire Ohara. Saul's huge figure moved forward, blocking the little girl who was trembling with fear, and the remaining arms plunged into the ground. Aokiji said lightly, I don't care about what the world government does. The most critical point is that, at least because of Roy's actions, this time the buster call has been terminated, and most of Ohara's civilians can survive. As for justice, he glanced at Robin again. Anyone's position of justice will change with time and circumstances. Do you think that after experiencing this incident, Roy's understanding of justice in his heart will not change? He slowly raised his hand, but at the moment when he was ready to move. Boom. 
The faces of Saul and Iokiji changed drastically. At the same time they turned their heads to look. On the eastern coastline of Ohara in the distance. A weird and permeating red glow rose to the sky. Dark smoke, it turned into a huge mushroom cloud and rose to the sky. Saul was stunned. Robin was stunned. Iokiji was also stunned. What happened to this? Isn't that where the refuge fleet is? Could it be? Damn Sakazuki. What the hell is he doing? Iokiji couldn't help cursing inwardly, his eyes dimmed suddenly. Robin even knelt on the ground with his entire face as grey, as if even his soul was annihilated. The whole world in front of her was like a tomb that was too majestic to go out, burying her heart completely. East of Ohara, coastline. A strong flame lingers in the sky. The tragic crying and crying of the civilians kept ringing. A refuge ship carrying hundreds of Ohara civilians slowly sank into the sea in the flames. Sakazuki Vice Admiral, I need an explanation. Roy's face turned to Akainu who slowly retracted his fist, his eyes gradually becoming bloodshot. Akainu said coldly, in the name of the chief executive officer of this operation, I think that criminals may be hidden on that refuge ship. As for the explanation? Roy Rear Admiral, I don't think I need to explain to you. In terms of military rank, I am one rank higher than you. In terms of position, now I am your immediate superior in this operation. Roy clenched his fists, gritted his teeth and said. The members of the CP department have clearly identified the civilians on the refuge ship one by one. They have cleared the suspicion. Many members of the CP department also participated in the buster call this time. Akainu just gave Roy a cold look. This is not something you need to manage. Roy Rear Admiral, you performed very well in this mission. After the mission is over, I will personally report to Marshal Kong to add to your combat exploits. However, no one can be 100% sure whether there are any criminals harboring among the civilians fleeing here. If any criminal is allowed to escape, this action will be declared a failure. The whole world will be in chaos. Such consequences are not something that Rear Admiral, your headquarters, can bear. Talking, he raised his hand and made a tactical gesture ready to attack. Boom. The sound of the earth cracking suddenly exploded. Akainu's face changed slightly, and he slammed his fist. Boom. Two fists, one red and one blue, entangled in airwaves, slamming into the void, bursting out an astonishing hurricane-like airwave. Are you attacking the superior? Akainu stared sternly at Roy, who was surrounded by blue airwaves and had crazy eyes. Tick. The hot magma squirmed and turned into a black smoky liquid that slowly slipped to the ground, burning the ground beneath the feet into a scorched black hole. Feeling the terrifying pain from his fist, Roy can clearly know that the airwave erupting from the fifth gate of the eight inner gates cannot completely isolate the high temperature of Akainu's magma. This is lava lava fruit. The existence with the highest attack power in the entire Devil Fruit series, placed in the hands of the terrifying monster Akainu Sakazuki, is unmatched and unmatched. ZZZ. On the surface of Roy's fist, weird sounds like barbecue gradually came out, watching the surrounding marine's scalp numb, and his heart was throbbing. I'm not attacking the superior. I am just performing my duty as a marine to protect the safety of innocent and weak civilians. Roy gritted his teeth and said solemnly, at this moment. The entire eastern coastline of Ohara is densely packed with countless civilians with ashen faces and desperate eyes. All of them did not move, even forgot to pick up the escape and board the ship. Just froze in place like a dried sculpture. Akainu frowned. He didn't expect that this fellow Roy could do this to such an extent. What you should understand is that you can't stop me. You should be very clear about how far the gap between you and me is. He said coldly. Roy didn't speak, but his crazy and determined eyes are enough to explain everything. Akainu squinted his eyes, in that case. He raised his hand, the marine behind him is ready to move. Swish. Kang Kang. The sound of sabers unsheathed suddenly exploded. One after another young figures appeared in Roy one after another holding a weapon in his hand, standing firmly behind him. Are you all going to rebel? Akainu's face is even more ugly. All the military academies graduated from Roy's side at this critical moment. Hina stepped forward, without the slightest fear in her eyes, and said in a deep voice. Sakazuki Vice Admiral, we have no intention to hinder your mission. This time the mission is over. All the survivors here are innocent civilians. We can't just watch you and your subordinates attack weak civilians. Tensions. At this moment, the Marine, who came to rescue by the major branches of West Blue, had a faint confrontation with the headquarters of the fleet. 
jungle. Roy. Aokiji looked at the blue airwave on the distant coastline from a distance, and his eyes under the sunglasses suddenly went in a trance. This funny junior boy actually really confronted Sakazuki. Gloomy sky, a piece of darkness, the whole world seemed to have only that azure beam of light. Aokiji fell silent subconsciously. I am the only light. He whispered in his heart, and a picture appeared in his mind. Saul's tears have rushed the bloodline on his face out of two gullies and shouted. Kuzan. Keep your eyes open and take a look. This is the justice you keep saying. Marine. As killing civilians. Aokiji was silent for a long time. The red and blue lights in the distance flickered alternately, setting off his expression to be bright and dark. Please, Kuzan. Saul knelt down suddenly with a bang. She is just a little girl who knows nothing. Talking. He turned his head and yelled at Robin with tears. Run. Robin, run. Go to sea. Go and find the only light, Robin panicked and said. But. Dot but I don't know anyone. Aokiji shook his head and said. Saul, you know that no one in this world can protect her. Saul was startled, a flash of despair flashed in his pupils. But his gaze suddenly saw the glimmer of light in the distance. Do not. Kuzan, someone can protect her. If it's him. He must be able to, he urged, shouted. Robin started running with tears on his face. She didn't know who Saul was talking about. The man named Roy has nothing to do with her, so why should he protect himself? But she can no longer manage that much. The world in front of me is dark. Endless darkness. Saul said to find light. Go ahead. Anyway, I have no other choice. Isn't it? Aokiji stared blankly at Robin, who was gradually running away. I don't know why but some emotion in his heart stopped him from pursuing him. Kuzan, actually, you want to keep justice too, don't you? Saul smiled bitterly. Aokiji was silent and said. I just want to know purely what the outcome of all this will be like. Yes, the little girl Saul wants to protect as she fights for life. The future encounter between this Ohara demon, Remnant, and that boy. And teenagers, can you protect her? Kuzan would like to know the answers to all these questions. He raised his head. You do it. Saul laughed. Aokiji's eyes drooped, and the frost in his hands gradually spread. The huge giant warrior was quickly frozen. The final frame in Aokiji's eyes was the familiar and honest smiling face. Well, he he he. Somehow, quietly looking at the body of the former classmate in front of him, he let out such a weird laugh, and two lines of tears flowed down his cheeks. Saul is going to die anyway, only he died. Roy's betrayal of Marine will not be held accountable. Distance, that thin back figure has turned into a black spot. Try your best to escape, Nico Robin. Your future is determined by the justice in Roy's heart. Such a thought flashed through Aokiji's mind. The eastern coastline of Ohara, the atmosphere is like a steel cable on a cliff. Shen Ning was suppressed to ultimate tensions. Both sides stared at the leader in front of him closely, not daring to take a breath. Tens of thousands of civilians gathered together with pale faces, cold sweat broke out with their hands clenched, and tremblingly looked at the scene in front of them. They couldn't understand why the two groups of marines would face each other here. But what they want so much in their hearts is. That marine boy splattered with blood can win this matchup. Because that marine boy is protecting their lives. They hope he can win. It's really a group of people who do not live or die. Do you think that with the strength of your West Blue Branch, you can fight against the elite of my headquarters? The corner of Akainu's mouth suddenly showed a mocking sneer, his tone full of murderous intent. Roy said solemnly, Sakazuki Vice Admiral, this is not a question of military strength. He raised his head, his gaze went straight over Akainu to look at the thousands of Marines from the headquarters behind him. You all should know who I am, but even if you don't know, it doesn't matter. But what you should know is that this place is full of innocent civilians. The order is very important, but what if there is a problem with the order? We are Marine. There is nothing wrong with executing orders as our primary responsibility. But don't forget your belief and original intention to join Marine. The massacre of innocent civilians. Do you think you can bear this infamy? Roy's voice was like a sharp knife, and it pierced deeply into the hearts of all Marines present. Among this group of Marines from the headquarters who participated in the Buster Call operation, many people suddenly hesitated, and the hand holding the gun trembled slightly. Yes, before becoming Marine, each of them was a civilian. Even after becoming Marine, many of their relatives and friends are civilians. 
In other words, today they are here without asking why the civilians killed. Maybe one day in the future, their relatives and friends will also die at the hands of this Marine's order. This is not their original intention to join the army. The most important is, Roy's last words hit the soul directly. Indiscriminately killing civilians, such infamy, will be with them all for the rest of their lives. Akainu ranks high and is bound to become Admiral's star in the military. But what about them? Akainu can bear such a burden, can they? Then, subconsciously, their hearts began to shake. Akainu frowned. He could clearly feel the inner shaking of his subordinates. So, Roy, is this why you broke the military order? You put your personal justice completely above Marine's justice? He said coldly, the black smoke coming out of his body became denser. Unabashed anger. Roy said flatly, there is no personal justice, how can there be Marine justice? Akainu's voice suddenly became extremely hoarse. This is the last time I warn you, Roy Rear Admiral. You have your justice, and I have my justice. I don't need to say the seriousness of the incident this time, you can understand it. As long as any scholar mixes into the common people, it will bring unimaginable chaos to the whole world. What is the problem of sacrificing tens of thousands of people here for world order and peace? Roy smiled, laughed mockingly, laughed sarcastically. What are you laughing at? Akainu said coldly. Roy shook his head. Sakazuki Vice Admiral, you are a genius, you are a monster, you are Marine's future admiral, and you are the one standing on the top of the mountain. But you have to understand that the person standing on the top of the mountain is far away from the real death, far away from the truly ordinary life, so naturally they can say such things. For the sake of the overall situation, some sacrifices are necessary? In this case, only someone like you can tell. I can't say it, and I can't do it. If I can't even save the civilians here today, I won't be qualified to talk about so-called justice. I'm standing here, I'm not standing on the top of the mountain. I only saw innocent civilians shivering, I only saw countless families shattered by one of your orders. I only saw hundreds of civilians flying around, crying and howling under the shelling. For the whole world? Do not, he laughed wantonly. What I see before my eyes is my whole world. Justice is a process, not an end. Akainu was stunned and gritted his teeth. In that case, don't blame me for being merciless. His body gradually exploded into an astonishing aura, and his fist was surrounded by severe hockey. Bluebrew. At this moment, a hurried telephone bug sounded suddenly. Akainu paused for the bow, the sound of a military phone worm connecting to communication came from his arms. The highest level of communication signal. Sakazuki, stop here. The buster call operation is over. Marshal Kong's low voice came from the phone worm. The buster call is over. Facing the command of Marine's Supreme Commander Kong, even as tough as Akainu, he had to obey and completely withdrew the army from Ohara. Until the dusk of that day descends on the earth. Hundreds of registered historians in Ohara all died, tens of thousands of civilians were displaced, and most of the Ohara island was inundated and scorched by artillery fire. The fall of the Tree of Omniscience, the demise of Ohara. Also announced a signal to the whole world. Anyone who wants to study the text of history will face a ruthless blow from the absolute power of this sea, the world government. Certainly, as this military operation, which was almost a massacre, came to an end, the whole world of marine began to smell an undercurrent of turbulence. The new, righteous forces, headed by Roy have begun to gradually challenge the tough forces of marine's previous generation. The military standoff that started on the eastern coast of Ohara. It's not just West Blue's problem. It is a question of the righteous power of the entire world. It is also because of this incident, made countless people begin to realize. Naval Headquarters Rear Admiral, Blue Tiger, Roy. What a terrifying and huge influence and right to speak in the Marine system. The seventh graduate of the Military Academy. Many people who will hold countless powers in the Marine system in the future. Even in the face of powerful characters like Akainu. Also without hesitation, without hesitation. On Roy's side, this is something that has never happened since the establishment of the Marine Military Academy. Only Roy, able to bring many unruly Military Academy geniuses, all gathered under his command. Three days later, Naval Headquarters, Marine Ford. A unique award ceremony is underway. The sun is shining. The wind on the sea is bitter. The snow white seagull flag carrying the Libra was flying freely in the sky. On the high platform, Naval Headquarters Marshal Kong looked solemnly and handed his white robe which represented Marine's first power, to Admiral Sengoku at the time. 
From now on, Marine's future is up to you, Sengoku. Kong smiled. Sengoku respectfully took over the marshal's cloak with both hands and nodded solemnly. We will never disappoint your expectations. Although Sengoku was led by Roy in the Buster Call incident, his actions to enforce the Buster Call and obey the orders of the world government were highly recognized by the decision makers of the world government. This is world government, Marine for them. It's just the sharpest weapon in your hand, what they need. It is this weapon that is loyal enough and obeys orders enough. They don't even want this weapon to have their own will. Kong smiled. He glanced at the mighty military phalanx in front of him for the last time. An expression of relief appeared on an old face. Marine, after all, it has grown up. He still clearly remembers the day he just became Marshal Marine. Marine is far from the scale and glory of today. And now, the older generation of Marine pillars Sengoku, Garp and Zephyr all started to embark on their own paths. The golden generation Akainu, Aokiji and Kazaru also ushered in their own glory. Not to mention the military academy elites headed by Roy in the third generation. His marine career has come to a perfect end, thought of here. He couldn't help searching for the figure of a young man in the crowd again. The existence of that boy, let him see some hope in his heart inexplicably. Well, the next ceremony will be handed over to you. Kong shook his head slightly, then smiled to Sengoku. Sengoku nodded, took a step, put on the large cloak that represented Marine's supreme power, and said loudly. Next, the old man will announce a news in the name of Marshal Naval Headquarters. From today onwards, Admiral Zephyr in the headquarters will completely resign from Admiral. After unanimously recommended by the top management of the headquarters and approved by the world government, Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral, Akainu, Sakazuki, Aokiji, Kuzan, and Kazaru, Paluzalino will fill the vacancies of the three admiral in the headquarters. From now on, the three of them will be Naval Headquarters E Admiral, they are the world government's highest combat power. The voice fell, a burst of enthusiastic applause suddenly exploded. The three of Akainu, Aokiji and Kazaru, is also slowly stepping up to the high platform. Accepted the honor of Marshal Sengoku, immediately after. Sengoku announced the rest of the awards, Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral Momosagi Gion, T Dolphin Plus, with penultimate's combat exploits and powerful combat power, they serve as alternates for Admiral of Headquarters. Naval Headquarters Rear Admiral, Blue Tiger, Roy, for his achievements in slaying the Ohara Demon in Buster Call, awarded the Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral rank. So far, the change of blood at the top decision-making level of Naval Headquarters was officially completed. The righteous force on the sea has officially entered a new era. On the high platform, Roy put on the Vice Admiral cloak, but he felt heavy in his heart, only feeling extremely ironic. Tumo has merit. As soon as I heard these four words, the bloody scene in the Ohara tree of all knowing library reappeared in his mind. The historians who smiled and died in front of them, they have all become their own so called combat merits. The training ceremony is over. Just when Roy was thinking about leaving, a low voice called him from behind. Roy, let's talk. Roy turned around, and Aokiji, wearing an admiral uniform, came into view. The naval headquarters campus, an empty space with no people. Bright and warm sunlight fell from the sky and swayed on the two of them. The cloak on his back was hunting in the wind. Aokiji and Roy stood against the wind. Aokiji looked at Roy, who was wearing the vice admiral cape in front of him, and couldn't help feeling secretly in his heart. He still remembered the scene of spying Roy from a distance with Gion outside the door of the military academy's dormitory late at night. It's been less than half a year now, the immature boy in front of him has completely grown into a man who can talk to him face to face. The world is unpredictable. But, thinking of the scene where Ohara Saul died in front of him with a smile in his mind, Aokiji couldn't help being silent. The two did not speak for a while. After a while, Kuzan Admiral, congratulations. Roy broke the silence and spoke actively. Aokiji is not a person who likes small talk. This guy has always been alone. Since he found himself, there must be a very important thing. Aokiji smiled disapprovingly, congratulations too. He deserves his name as Admiral. With his exploits and strength, promotion to Admiral is due, but it is only a matter of time. Only because Sengoku has been in Admiral's position before, there are only two vacant Admiral positions. It is difficult for the head of the department to pick two out of the three of Akainu Kazaru Aokiji, so it has been delayed. 
The outbreak of the Ohara incident allowed Sengoku to show his decisiveness and determination to maintain the government's rule in front of the world government, so he was promoted to Marshal Marine. Thus, Aokiji and the three of them were able to become Admiral one by one. Roy heard Aokiji's congratulations and smiled. I didn't do much this time. Aokiji was silent, looking at Roy with cold eyes. Saul, I will kill for you. The sudden words made Roy's pupils suddenly tighten. He only felt a piercing chill from the bottom of his feet, and then ran up his brain along the spine. Even the warm sunlight in the sky above could not dispel the strange chill. You do not need to worry. I am not going to report you, Roy. Kuzan wearing round sunglasses can't see the change in his eyes, and his voice reveals an indescribable calm and indifference. Roy tried his best to keep his expression calm and whispered. So what do you mean? Kuzan didn't speak for a while, but turned his head slowly, his eyes drifting to the distant sky blankly. He saw the sea, saw the sky, finally, his eyes focused on the two huge black characters on the central military fortress of the headquarters. The two heavy words, dragon and phoenix dance, and, suicide. Justice. To be honest, Roy, it's not just you. Over the years, including me, countless marines have been trying to figure out what those two words mean. Aokiji spoke up. We marine, since we joined the army on the first day, we chanted this vague slogan. For justice. Some people are just accustomed, some just follow the crowd, some people disagree, and some people really want to abide by this belief. Perhaps for Mr. Garp, Teacher Zephyr and the old marines of their generation, their justice was almost complete from the moment Roger was executed. But in this age of great pirates, what will justice be for us? Kuzan changed his head, took off his sunglasses, and stared at Roy sternly. I used to follow Teacher Zephyr and Mr. Garp, but that is not my justice, I am still looking for. Saul found it. Although he died in my hands, he has no regrets. He put the last hope and justice in his heart into your hands. Roy was stunned. Saul. Kuzan smiled. Don't feel burdened, because the real burden is not this. Perhaps someday in the future, a little girl destined to be burdened with sin will come to you. At that time, your choice will truly reflect your inner justice. That's why I didn't report you. Saul uses the cause planted by his own life. What kind of fruit will grow into you in the end? The answer to this question is very important to me. Roy clenched his fists subconsciously. Nico Robin, the name flashed through his mind. Kuzan said solemnly. The little girl's information has already been handed over to the headquarters. It is impossible to hide this matter. Son of the devil, Nico Robin, this is her name. Roy, what you have to understand is that I am helping you, not because of you. It's just because of my many years of friendship with Saul. It's also because I want to find the answer to that question. Kuzan squinted his eyes and turned around. Work hard, no matter how you want to give me this answer, with your current strength, it is far from enough. We ours. It's still the familiar school ground. Roy was carrying out the training with the weight specially made by the military department. One by one, the stars pierced the night sky, and the dense night seemed to shudder. Boom. He suddenly dropped the load on his shoulders, and the staggering weight smashed a hole in the ground. Gasping heavily, Roy felt the air that he breathed was abnormally cold. Aokiji is gone, but his words lingered in Roy's heart for a long time. Nico Robin, Orovia's biological daughter. The little Ohara girl, known as the son of the devil. After all, he ran away. It's just that he didn't expect that. Saul had only seen one or two faces, but finally entrusted his last hope to himself. He was not afraid of meeting that little girl. But some things, had to prepare in advance. Kuzan is right, although my own combat power today can be said to be good. But it is far from enough. But since the system went into deep sleep, his strength hasn't taken a step forward for a long time. The sixth gate of the eight inner gates, which was once opened in the defense of Marineford, is now like a moat that can never be crossed. No matter Roy tried his best to exercise the strength of his body frantically, the door remained as solid as a rock, as if it had never been opened. It's not going to work like this. Roy gritted his teeth, and Chunin couldn't help but think of such an extremely helpless thought. Are you in a hurry? At this moment, a low and old voice sounded not far from behind. Roy was taken aback, turned around, and nodded respectfully. Old Zephyr. It was Zephyr who came here. His face is not pretty. A lot of things can't be rushed, brat. The old man knows that you have experienced a lot in Ohara and want to eagerly improve your strength. Zephyr walked over worriedly, came to Roy, and said solemnly. 
He looked at the load on the ground that had dented the ground, and couldn't help shook his head. This little lunatic is too cruel. Roy raised his hand and wiped the hot sweat on his face, then grinned reluctantly and said. Why are you here? Zephyr paused, then said. The old man is a little worried about you. A melancholy flashed deep in his eyes. In Ohara, you have done well. Even if you change your husband, it is estimated that you can only achieve this level. You saved tens of thousands of innocent civilians in Ohara. At least at this point, you have proven that you are an extremely good marine. Roy sighed and murmured in a low voice, it's done very well, but I still haven't been able to save everyone. Zephyr was taken aback, then raised his hand and patted Roy's shoulder, and said with earnestness. Boy, even an old man, it is impossible to save everyone. You should know this better than anyone else. The scholars of Ohara certainly deserve death, but they did violate the insurmountable law. From the moment they began to study the text of history, they should have a mortal consciousness. Listening to Zephyr's words, Roy's mind once again resurfaced in the library of the tree of all knowing that the generously dying smiling faces, and his heart trembled inexplicably. Ms. Zephyr, I'm fine. He raised his head and smiled. Zephyr sighed when he saw Roy's bitter smile, but he didn't say much. There are some hurdles that need to be walked through alone. No one can empathize. Those saying that I can understand the pain you are going through are just comforting shit. These words, Zephyr has listened too much over the years. So he will not speak out. Come on, it's time. Zephyr raised his spirits, his expression became solemn, and he said solemnly. Roy was startled, and a touch of joy immediately appeared on his face. Real? Zephyr smiled and nodded. Your physical fitness is completely sufficient. Although the old man can't understand your practice method to break through the limits of your body, thinking about it, if you can succeed in master hockey, it might be helpful to your current bottleneck breakthrough, right? You also participated in the Marine Ford defense. Naturally, it is clear that in the second half of the Grand Line, hockey is the mainstream of the combat system. Your graduation application has been approved, and you will be sent to New World soon. At that time, the opponents you face will be stronger than ever before. The old man knows that you will not underestimate the enemy, and that you will not be complacent about killing a golden lion, but this hockey, you have to be a master anyway. Roy nodded solemnly. He knew very well how much luck he had in successfully killing the golden lion that day. Where is the legendary big pirate who sits on an equal footing with Roger and Whitebeard so easily killed? The defeat of Golden Lion that day was largely related to his underestimation and his hidden injuries. Then, let's get started, you only have half a month. Zephyr slowly took off the cloak of justice behind him. After half a month, you will leave New World to perform a mission. Talking, on Zephyr's arms, a bit of air was gradually lingering. As black as ink, as hard as steel, armament hockey. Black arm. Time flies, soon half a month passed. In the past two weeks, Roy's days are extremely fulfilling. Consolidate the content of cultural courses, further practice the profound meaning of Marine Six styles. Strengthen the body, in the middle of the night, every day when there is no movement, I practice and learn hockey with Zephyr. But this practice desperately, it also brought him a rapid improvement in strength. On this day, Marine Ford at four in the morning. The two figures flickered in the dark at an alarming speed. They are like phantom lights in the night, every action oozes a kind of ultimate domineering and powerful posture. The two figures are far apart, a figure as burly as a mountain. The other is as agile as a leopard, each time the two figures crossed each other. All collided with extremely surging airwaves. The yellow sand roaring like a dragon swept like a hurricane in this huge school field. The ground of the school field was blasted out of deep pits one after another. Ha 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 ha. Smelly boy, it's pretty good. The burly figure dragged a dent on the ground, and the short purple hair followed the wind and squalls, exuding a bitter and majestic aura. Zephyr looked at the slightly gasping figure on the ground in the distance, and couldn't help but smile with admiration from the corner of his mouth. After these days of training, Roy's growth rate is quite gratifying, even beyond his expectations. But after another thought, Roy is already very good at close to body combat. I even fought life and death against a strong man of the Golden Lion level. His progress, it can be explained. Bring it on. Let the old man see with his own eyes, how much you have grown up now. Zephyr laughed. Suddenly the fists collided heavily. A gleam of pitch black and sharp edge quickly stained his arms like ink. Armament hockey, Zephyr's strongest ability to become famous. Strong enough to take off the world-recognized black arm nickname. 
Hoo hoo hoo. Rapid breathing, in the icy night, it turned into a hoarfrost like banner. Amidst the billowing dust, Roy bent over slightly halfway. There is boundless fighting spirit in the bright star like eyes. He clenched his fist subconsciously, with such an action of him. On the surface of his body, a layer of blue airwave like a blaze gradually lingered, swaying like a turbulent blue tide on his body surface. Snapped. Majestic momentum, the ground under his feet was crushed so that cracks appeared, and the rubble suddenly splashed. The next moment, Roy gritted his teeth abruptly. At the same time, a spiral of twisting air appeared on both fists, entwining his arm. Armament hockey entangling. Although it's only the most basic and entry level armament hockey. But it also means that Roy finally stepped into the door of hockey's practice. This is also his biggest cultivation achievement in the past half month. Call. A long breath, heavy, turned into a meter long white mist. It poured out in Roy's mouth. Old man, be careful. Roy's eyes were bloody, and there was a deep smile at the corner of his mouth. Boom. Both feet crushed the ground, at the same time. The floating gravel in the void, disintegrated into dust in an instant. A blue light flashed across the school grounds at a terrifying speed. Zephyr's eyes condensed suddenly, and he let out a cheerful laugh. Good job. Black Iron Fist, brandishly swings like a giant's battle spear. Boom. The earth-shattering roar exploded from the center of the collision between the two. The boundless raging waves spread out in all directions centered on the two people. As if a small tsunami appeared on the earth, there have been waves. It slowly disappeared after spreading hundreds of meters all the way. After a while, the surging dust gradually came to an end. Zephyr's figure has disappeared from the school field. Only Roy was panting alone in the broken pit, laughing wildly. Far away, Zephyr's voice came from far away. Boy, you are qualified. Quickly go back and have a rest, and report to the Marshal's mansion tomorrow. Your mission goal this time is. Sand Crocodile Crocodile. Roy, lying on the ground, was taken aback when he heard the name, and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Lao Sha. At this time, that guy is probably still a supernova. He stared at the stars and the bright moon that were gradually disappearing in the early morning. Raise your hand, looked at the arm covered with many scars. Five fingers clenched into a fist. New world, here I am. Roy murmured with a smile in his heart, his eyes full of determination. Early morning, Naval Headquarters Marshal's Mansion. Putting on a brand new uniform, Roy stepped into Marshal Marine's office under the leadership of the messenger. This is his first time here after the Ohara incident. He didn't know if Sengoku could see through his small actions in the Ohara incident. But what he can be sure of is, with the wisdom of Sengoku. Absolutely see the clues, he didn't think too much. Shaking his head to suppress the complex thoughts in my heart. Push the door and enter. Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral, codenamed Blue Tiger, Roy, C. Marshal Sengoku. After Roy entered the Marshal's office, he raised his hand solemnly and saluted the man sitting at the head of the Marshal's mansion. There are mountains of documents on the desk. A plaque hung on the wall full of Japanese classical style behind it. There are five characters, Absolute Justice, written on it. Below the plaque, a tall and burly figure sits on the main seat, next to a white goat. Marine's new supreme commander, Sengoku of Buddha. Hear Roy's voice. Sengoku slowly lifted his head from the file on the desk and held his glasses. Well, here it is. He nodded. Roy, it looks like we haven't seen each other for a long time. A smile appeared on Marshal Sengoku's face, and he didn't formulately call Roy's military rank. Roy was taken aback for a moment and subconsciously replied. Yes, Marshal Sengoku. Since the Ohara incident, I have been practicing hard under the guidance of teacher Zephyr, trying to improve my strength. Sangoku waved his hand and smiled. The old man knows that the old boy Zephyr can't keep things secret. Tenton is always talking in the old man's ears about how good his disciple is and how fast he has improved. He looked at Roy up and down, and nodded appreciatively. Very good momentum, it seems that you have gained a lot from your cultivation during this period of time. Roy just wanted to respond modestly, but unexpectedly, Sengoku's next sentence made him stunned. His face suddenly turned pale. But this can't be your reason to deceive the old man in the West Blue Mission. Sengoku's expression suddenly became extremely cold. On the rimless round glasses, bursts of strange cold light were reflected. A thin layer of cold sweat oozes out of Roy's back unknowingly. Marshal Sengoku. Really know it? 
his fist tightened involuntarily, but quickly loosened. Marshal Sengoku, I don't know what you mean. Roy tried his best to suppress the anxiety in his heart, and said solemnly. The West Blue Mission, my goal is to capture the world government wanted Orovia alive, and kill Vice Admiral Saul who defected. The specific task execution result, I have reported to you before the Ohara incident. Sangoku didn't speak, but stared at Roy coldly. After a while, until I saw Roy's scalp tingling. He slowly pulled out a military document from the pile of documents in front of him, and raised his head to Roy. This is the report of the Ohara incident. It clearly records the time of death of the offenders Orovia and Saul. This is a professional conclusion drawn by the coroner of the medical department of this department. But the time of their death is a little different from the time you reported to me. The most important thing is that when you reported the results of the mission, the old man had personally verified the life card of Saul himself left in the headquarters. At that time, his life card had not completely burned out. So, do you understand, Roy Vice Admiral? Roy was suddenly struck by lightning when he heard the words, gritted his teeth. But just when he was running his brain quickly preparing to defend, Sengoku suddenly smiled. In Roy's stunned eyes, he put the military document in the mouth of the goat beside it. Guru Guru. The military intelligence document that proved Roy defies orders and deceived his superiors, was completely chewed into pieces in less than a few seconds and swallowed into the goat's belly. No one knows this document except the old man. So, this old man should not have happened, Sangoku said solemnly. Anyone will have a fever and make mistakes when you are young, and the beliefs in your heart are easily influenced by others. He slowly stood up from the main seat, it's just that I don't want to see similar things happen again in the future. In the military department, both your teacher Zephyr and the old man have high hopes for you. Your future, your future, may even surpass the three of Sakazuki. So the old man doesn't want you to take a crooked road. Finished, he didn't wait for Roy to answer, and threw a document in front of him to Roy. Roy Vice Admiral, this is your mission this time. Your mission is very simple, that is to surrender Crocodile the pirate supernova Crocodile, and give him an offer that cannot be rejected. You can lead a team of a hundred people, accompanied by a warship. Based on your results in the cultural theory class of the military academy, you should be very clear about how complicated and dangerous the sea in New World is, so you must choose your sailing route carefully. In addition, for this mission, you need to go to the Fishman Island to collect any information about the Fishman Island. You should have sufficient judgment. When the voice fell, Sangoku had returned to the main position, looking down at the file in his hand, and never looked at Roy again. Roy squeezed the file in his hand tightly, his eyes full of the huge plaque. Somehow, he actually felt that plaque, it's as heavy as the sky. The sea is reckless and ethereal, the sun is just right. The huge warship sailed forward at an unhurried speed, leaving a long trace on the sea, like a blue tail. On the deck, Roy held his chest with both hands, standing alone on the bow of the ship, blowing the sea breeze. He looked out at the sea in the distance, stunned. At this time, Three days have passed since the Yen Shuifu accepted the task. But in his mind, Sangoku looked at the coldness in his eyes that day. Still lingering like a nightmare. Sangoku is a marine, yes. He has his own, Kun justice in the world, and resolutely maintains the rule of the world government. You can't say that what he did is wrong. No matter what the world government did 800 years ago, at least in the eyes of Sangoku. The order established by the world government can relatively maintain the peace and stability of the world structure. This is Sengoku's correct idea as a vested interest, and it is understandable. The rules of order and inequality established by the world government today hide a lot of darkness and inferiority. Such as racial discrimination, like human trafficking, like slavery, but at least it can keep most areas of this sea in a relatively peaceful and stable state. Sengoku's actions were not directed at Roy, he was just warning Roy. Don't try to challenge his authority, don't try to challenge his justice. Roy sighed suddenly. As a traverser familiar with the plot, he naturally knows how difficult it is to be a marine. It would be convenient if he had the kind of, even the flood after death, he didn't care about anything, just blacken. To collect money to collect money, should be an official. If you want to win over people's hearts, then win over people's hearts. Give money to money. Maybe like Kazaru's second-rate son. Being a rogue marine who lives in a mess is also free and unrestrained. But he is not such a person, he also didn't want to be such a person. He was already such a person in the past, but he is not alive now as before. If nothing has changed, this traveled to a whole new world. What's the point? 
it's just another place to continue to live, not even the real life. Now that things have progressed to this point, the only way is to take the identity of Marine well and seriously. This is what a responsible person should do. Moreover, it is also impossible for him to leave Marine. Leave casually, is he worthy of Zephyr's expectations? Thought of here, Roy smiled, clenched his fists tighter, and murmured softly. This dog lives, it's quite difficult. But Lousy doesn't accept his fate. Lousy wants to win. He took a deep breath, only feeling the depressed mood in his heart suddenly relaxed a lot. What are you talking about? A low and cold voice sounded behind him. It's a ghost spider. After this guy heard that he was coming to New World, he didn't say anything to pack his luggage or say anything. He just boarded Roy's warship on his own. Roy asked him why, but the latter just said lightly. I have nowhere to go. Yes, he has nowhere to go. In other words, he can go anywhere, but he only chose to follow Roy. The life between men and men, it's that simple. Roy shook his head lightly and smiled. It's nothing serious. I went to the Marshal's mansion before leaving. Marshal Sengoku warned me a few words. The ghost spider frowned. He, who always seems indifferent, is actually very sensitive to other people's emotions. He glanced at Roy. Don't worry, no matter what, I will stand by your side. Roy felt warm and couldn't help laughing. The ghost spider slowly said. Don't laugh, I'm serious. But, he paused. Why don't you let Hu Shaoshan follow? In addition to ghost spiders, Huo Shao Shan Na Han also wants to follow Roy to New World. It's just that Roy didn't let it. After graduating from military academy, the vast majority of the seventh military academy students have scattered their things. Hina returned to West Blue, the mole stayed in the first half of the Grand Line. Others also went to major branches, only Roy, Huo Shao Shan, and ghost spider stayed in the headquarters. Hu Shao Shan. Forget that guy. Roy smiled and said, Don't say it's him, I don't want you to come either. It's just that you just want to follow, I can't help it. Hu Shaoshan is not suitable for this task, he is ready to get married after all. Huo Shaoshan got closer and closer to the subject after graduation, and that girl Roy had also seen her. She was not the kind who looked very good, but she had a very gentle personality, and she was a sensible wife and mother. The ghost spider nodded. From the day he joined the army, he had no plans to start a family. He doesn't believe in love, only believe in the knife in the hand. Now there is a man in front of him who is called, the boss, in his heart. Get ready. Roy patted the ghost spider on the shoulder and turned around, gradually exuding a burst of astonishing fighting spirit. Here we are. He said. Distance, a deserted island gradually came into view. On the shoreline of a desert island, there is a black skull flag. Crocodile pirates. Desert island. On the beach, bonfires are rising everywhere. The aroma of roasted meat and fine wine is full of fragrance, like a fairyland. Hundreds of pirates were eating grilled meat around several bonfires, pouring their heads up and pouring hard liquor, and sometimes they laughed fiercely. Ha 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 ha. Captain Crocodile is amazing. What kind of giant axe pirate group before? Their captain didn't even have a chance to shoot and the entire ship collapsed directly under Captain Crocodile's sandstorm. Yeah, ha ha ha. What a shit, South Blue's supernova was instantly sucked into humans. As long as we follow Captain Crocodile, where can this sea go? I'm afraid that even the Whitebeard pirate group is not our opponent. Ha 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 ha. There was another burst of crazy laughter. But at this moment, an anxious voice suddenly sounded in the crowd of pirates. That's. What's that? It's Marine's warship. Marine is coming. The moment the sound fell, all the pirates immediately put down the wine and barbecue in their hands, and each took up their weapons. Each of them looked warily toward the sea, the next expression became very exciting. Can't help but burst out a burst of arrogant laughter. Marine? Ha 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 ha. There is only one warship. Are they here to die? By the way, Marine, we haven't killed it for a long time. Although it's a bit poor, I guess there are a lot of supplies on that warship, right? The pirates sneered sneer, their eyes were full of violence and wildness, and they did not put the marine battleship in front of them at all. From the Grand Line, they rushed into the New World like a broken bamboo, followed the sand crocodile Clocta, and became famous in the sea like a rising star. Neither the pirate nor the marine was able to hinder their pace along the way. Especially after Captain Crocodile and Douglas Bullet, a former crew member of the Roger Pirates, had a tie, their ambitions suddenly swelled to the extreme. Douglas Bullet, that's the crew of One Piece. 
known as the monster in the Roger Pirates group, this sea has almost turned upside down. But how can this be? Isn't it that they couldn't help them Captain Crocodile? Only the big pirates of New World such as Whitebeard and Big Mom are the targets of their Crocodile Pirate Group challenge. How could a marine battleship in this area make them feel terrified? Little ones. Ready for lousy. Kill all the men on the warship, and the women will stay and make everyone feel good. In addition, the supplies on the ship belong to our Crocodile Pirate Group. At this time, the scar-faced pirate who looked like a deputy captain smiled loudly. Roar. There was a burst of enthusiastic cheers from the pirate crowd. As if that warship did not represent the most powerful military organization in this sea, but just the prey in their eyes. But just before their fanatical cheers have not completely subsided. Their eyes widened suddenly, and their pupils shrank. The warships are hundreds of meters away from the land on the island where they are located. A figure with a strange breath, but suddenly appeared on the bow of the warship. Then, jump off suddenly, huh? The air and sea under your feet are like solid flat ground. Waves broke out under the footsteps of that person. Next moment, they just feel a flower in front of them. A touch of black is so amazing that ultimate sword light has flashed in front of them. Swish. Chi 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 chi. The dozen or so pirates standing in the forefront shook their bodies suddenly, and then a thin line of blood slowly appeared on the surface of their bodies. The bloodlines gradually spread, then, snapped. A large pool of blood mixed with broken internal organs spouted from the bloodline on the surface of their bodies, splattering the ground. The pirates' complexions changed suddenly, and in their pale complexions, their eyes oozing with boundless terror stared at the man in front of him who was slowly revealing his figure. Two sabers dripping blood, long black hair flying in the air. Grim face, never smiling face, and that cloak of justice fluttering in the rain of blood. Surrender, don't kill, don't surrender. The ghost spider raised his head and said coldly. Die. Two Bing sabers suddenly swung out. The black arc tore open the ground in front of him, and cut the three pirates in front of him who had no time to react, into pieces of meat. All the pirates took a breath of fright at the tragic and terrifying scene before them. They have never seen such a marine. There is never unnecessary nonsense. No fancy moves, you die as soon as you shoot. Swordsmanship is even more fierce and fierce to ultimate. For a while, all of them dare not make any moves. This is the Ghost Spider, a marine swordsman whose talent in swordsmanship has been recognized by Momosagi. At this moment, he may not be famous in this sea yet. No one thought, in the future, this man nicknamed Shinigami is the left and right arm of the future Marine King Roy. Fearfully called by the world's strongest. Roy's saber. On a desert island, sword marks crisscross. The wind screamed. Scarlet blood dyed the earth red, and the corpse fell to the ground. The atmosphere was very depressing. The pirates stared numbly at the young marine in front of them, and there was an unimaginable fear in their hearts. Not because of how strong this cold-looking marine is, but because of his eyes, indifferent, plain. Even if it is to tear a person in two alive, there was no emotional change in the pupils of the eyes. It seemed to be something that couldn't be more ordinary. They went to sea for so long, there are countless marines I have encountered. But marine has never seen such a decisive killing. Who are you? One of the pirates suddenly gritted his teeth and trembled. Then everyone else only saw that marine glanced at him indifferently. Wield a knife. Dripping blood, head down. All in one go. Boom. The pirate's head was sprayed with blood red liquid, and it rumblingly rolled on the ground for a few times before it slowly stopped. The others stared at the pirate's head in a dazed and terrified expression, still retaining the expression of confusion and fear before his death. I don't want to say it again. Surrender and don't kill. No surrender, only death, the ghost spider said coldly. The two swords flowing with blood seemed to have a dazzling luster under the reflection of the sun, which made people shudder. Damn. Fight with him. A little marine kid. Who do you think you are? We are the crocodile pirates. Kill. Kill him. The pirates gritted their teeth and burst out shouts of killing, carrying various weapons in their hands and surrounded the ghost spiders. The ghost spider's eyes didn't change at all, but he shook his head slightly. Whoosh. His figure suddenly disappeared in the same place as a ghost. Shave. Laugh. A pirate fell, there was a bloody sword mark across his chest. Blood sprinkler. Another sword glow nade. Another pirate fell to the ground, twitching all over. In an instant, the screams of horror and painful wailing of the pirates continued on the beach. 
Ghost spiders are like Shinigami hiding in the dark, reaping their lives unscrupulously. His double knives are Shinigami's sickles, silent steps are Shinigami's dance. The spilt blood is his footprint, the sound of a sharp blade cutting through flesh and blood. It's Shinigami's whisper, from a distance. The pirates couldn't even find him, but fell one after another. No extra action, there is only one fatal blow and cruelty and decisiveness. It's like a thrilling art of killing, after a few breaths. Suddenly, somewhere on the beach, a crack appeared suddenly. A gloomy yellow, the sharp sword pierced out at an astonishing speed. The face of the ghost spider who was swinging the knife slightly changed, and a biting chill came out of his heart. An unprecedented sense of crisis hit my heart all at once. He ignored the pirate in front of him, put away both knives. Lying across his chest. Kang. The huge long sword that Huang Sha converged into violently collided with his double knives, making a sharp hum of gold and iron. Yellow sand splashed and scattered, the ghost spider's figure dragged back nearly ten meters. At the corner of his mouth, a blood stain slowly overflowed. But his eyes were still extremely cold, looking in a certain direction in the depths of a certain desert island. There, the surging yellow sand, like the mighty river of dark gold. Upside down, layers, it was like a huge monster roaring in the yellow sand waterfall. Amidst the violent yellow sand that swept through, a deep, hoarse voice came out slowly, revealing a wave of sarcasm. What a marine kid who lives and lives. Lousy didn't have time to trouble with marine, but marine took the initiative to find the door. In that case, then you die here. The moment the voice fell. In the roaring yellow sand, a faintly fuzzy figure suddenly waved. The next moment, the yellow sand that was constantly rising from the earth, suddenly seemed to have received a call, and let out an earth-shattering roar. Strong wind, layer by layer, yellow sand as high as hundreds of meters. Spins at an extremely terrifying speed, turned into a giant yellow sand storm. Roaring constantly from the depths of the desert island. The boss is showing off. Let's run. Otherwise we will all die here. Seeing this horrible scene, the pirates shouted in horror and scrambled with their heads. They had seen their captain use this trick with their own eyes, and it was a horrible blow that could easily destroy a small city. The ghost spider also ignored the escaped pirate, his eyes were full of gloomy staring at the yellow sandstorm that was coming faster and faster. Behind it is the warship, if he avoids it. The warship will inevitably be crushed to pieces in an instant in this storm. So, he slowly lowered his body, the two sabers are staggered from the left to the right. The whole body presents a wild attacking posture. The void behind him, a huge black spider phantom slowly emerged. Two swords. The ghost spider gritted his teeth, his eyes flashed with a cruel black light. Double knives outrageously. Two magnificent black sword arcs staggered out, blasting towards the sandstorm. Evil spider Shuangsha. Boom. Immediately after. The earth-shaking roar and explosion suddenly exploded on the desert island beach. Rumble. The yellow sand blasted down and turned into a rain of sand in the sky. Sword Chi swept through the roaring wind, stirring the yellow sand, and the terrifying acceleration made the gravel create a bullet-like impact, splashing dense small craters on the ground. In the billowing dust, the ghost spider's figure slowly emerged, his face faintly pale, and his breath short. He knelt on one knee with a saber in both hands, and the bloodstains overflowing from the corner of his mouth became clearer but his eyes were so bright that they exuded a scarlet light. What a nice look. You should be a graduate of this military academy, this age. The hoarse and low voice came from the surging yellow sand, and the figure gradually became clear. A tall body with a hairstyle with a big back. The eyes were arrogant and mocking, wearing a black fur coat. Under the black coat disturbed by the strong wind. A golden hook reflected an astonishing cold light. Sand crocodile crocodile, with a bounty of 81 million baileys. When the ghost spider saw this figure, his tone was cold and authentic. Crocodile sneered, unexpectedly, my name is still quite resounding. It's just that, regarding this bounty, Lousy has long been very upset with you marine. It's only 81 million baileys, do you look down on me crocodile too? He suddenly uttered a roar, his right hand suddenly spread out and turned into yellow sand, and he waved at the ghost spider laugh. A sharp and boundless yellow sand blade suddenly cut open the sandy ground beneath his feet, turning into a dazzling sword energy and screaming towards the ghost spider. The ghost spider's pupils suddenly shrank, boom. The sand blade suddenly became violent, and then turned into countless grit and rose up. 
A figure entwined with blue airwaves appeared in front of the ghost spider like a ghost, waved with one hand, and shattered the huge sand blade. Um? Crocodile's face changed slightly, and his eyes narrowed subconsciously. I didn't expect it to be you. Marine's new generation of stars killed the teenager of Golden Lion Shaki. Naval Headquarters Vice Admiral, Blue Tiger, Roy. Roy, who was surrounded by blue airwaves, didn't even look at Crocodile. Instead, he turned to look at the ghost spider and asked in a deep voice. Are you okay? The ghost spider shook his head blankly. It's okay, it's just a bit exhausted. He stood up while supporting his body with double knives, and took two steps back slowly. After the tentative fight just now, he clearly knew that he was not yet the opponent of this crocodile, and the next battle could only be handed over to Roy. Only then did Roy turn around again, looked at the purple lightning throbbing in the bottomless gully on the ground in front of him, and frowned. Crocodile's attack caused the earth to generate static electricity. This is exactly the same as the battle between him and Luffy in Alabasta twenty years later. Feelings have reached their peak at this time. Sand Crocodile Crocodile, this time, I am representing naval headquarters and come to invite you as seven warlords of the sea. Roy didn't have much explanation, and straight to the point. His posture is extremely tough, with a tone that can't be questioned by anyone. Seven warlords of the sea. Crocodile was taken aback when he heard the words, and then a mocking smile gradually appeared at the corner of his mouth. Ha ha. H a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a h a. Don't be kidding me, Roy. Right? You want Lousy to be the running dog of the world government and your marine? You're just the vice admiral of the headquarters, thinking that if you kill the golden lion with shit on the battlefield, you will really be able to run wild on this sea? Crocodile's eyes gradually flushed with madness, and the muscles of his face seemed to be distorted by excessive anger. In this case, if you change the three marine monsters, it will be a little bit interesting. But if it's you. Also, no, enough, grid. This is new world. Lousy. Dot but crocodile. The mad roar fell, and crocodile's figure turned into yellow sand and shot towards Roy. His hands spread out again and turned into sand, turning into four huge desert blades. Desert King Kong knife. Buzzing. The sharp hum of the sharp blade cutting through the air suddenly exploded. The bitter wind came over, tearing Roy's collar and hair frantically like an eager lover. As soon as Crocodile shot, he felt the sharpness of this desert sword. That is the edge that can easily cut the earth. It is conceivable that if a fragile human body is hit, it is estimated to be cut into two parts in an instant. A bitter wave of air hit his face, blowing the Vice Admiral cloak behind Roy hunting. But at this moment, Crocodile, who was originally grinning, suddenly shrank his pupils because he actually saw the corner of the boy marine's mouth. Slowly outline an unscrupulous arc. I know this is new world. He said such a sentence. Then, huh. A breath of incomparable severity, wrapped around his fist at an astonishing speed, like a small hurricane. Hockey. Crocodile's heart jumped, and he yelled frantically in his head. He saw Roy punching. Boom. Four sharp and boundless sand blades suddenly shattered under this punch. Next moment, in the sky full of yellow sand. Roy's figure is like a tiger emerging from the cage, abruptly tore open the harsh dust, and rushed towards him. What a fast speed! Such a terrifying thought suddenly flashed through Crocodile's mind. It's not that he has never fought against Marine who is good at using one of Marine's six styles, shaved. But Roy's unreasonable speed, see you for the first time. Die. He uttered a violent shout with crimson eyes, and the golden hook in his left hand swung down heavily. The sharp tip of the gold hook, like a needle, glowed with a strange purple luster. Poison. That is enough to make anyone deadly poison. But the next scene shook Crocodile's heart wildly. Disappeared. Roy's figure, it disappeared before his eyes like a ghost. The person who doesn't understand what New World is, it's you, Crocodile. At this moment, Roy's low voice sounded behind Crocodile. He was shocked when he heard the words and turned around subconsciously. But the moment he just turned around, he felt an unimaginable amazing force. Coming from my abdomen, make him bend his body. Like a cooked shrimp, flew upside down like a cannonball. Boom. Crocodile's body slammed heavily on the ground in the distance, smashing the ground into a huge deep pit forcibly. Far away, the crew of Marine who followed Roy to the New World mission were all stunned by the scene in front of them, and their eyeballs almost fell out of their eye sockets. They have never seen such a hardy fighting art. 
That kind of fierce, wild, and thunderous fighting stance. Roy's seemingly thin body was dyed with a wild charm. This kind of thrill to the flesh, give people a strong and incomparable visual impact. Too strong, it is too strong. New World Supernova Pirate, Crocodile, the Sand Crocodile, was blown out in front of Roy Vice Admiral. The ghost spider looked at this scene with shining eyes, and a smile was extremely rare at the corner of his mouth. He knows, from the moment Roy decided to take action. The end of Crocodile is doomed. This is an extremely blind trust. Even the ghost spider itself can't explain it clearly. But he just knew that Roy would win, and it will win soon. Damn. At this moment, in the billowing smoke, the roar of Crocodile hissed suddenly came out. His figure stood up swayingly, spitting out a large mouthful of blood at the corner of his mouth. Damn Marine. How dare you? He roared, suddenly pressing his hand heavily on the ground under his feet. Death to Lousy. All of you are buried on this island for Lousy. The endless sand and dryness are your graves. Erosion reincarnation. Boom. The invisible airwaves burst forth suddenly. The terrifying and violent wind and sand, it burst out from Crocodile's body. Then it continued to spread to the ground under his feet. A strange scene visible to the naked eye appeared. Withered, dry, erosion, die. The earth under your feet, with a terrifying speed, the desertification continues. The moisture in the soil, surrounding plants. Jungle, insect, everything, under this terrible force, they quickly dried up and cut off their vitality. The marines all backed away in horror, trying to avoid that terrible corrosive ability. But at this moment, a ray of blue light flashed in the void. Crocodile stiffened suddenly, the crazy grin on his face also freezes suddenly. One hand, a hand wrapped around armament hockey. I don't know when he has pinched his neck tightly. Then, that hand burst out with irresistible power. Twist and shake. Boom. Crocodile just felt the sky spinning before his eyes. The head has a very warm and intimate contact with the earth directly. Boom. The earth shattered with countless cracks. Crocodile's pupils dilated for a while, and he vomited a suffocated blood in his mouth again. He wanted to lift his left hand, but the feet are stomping down and flying. Kang. The extremely hard golden hook suddenly turned into countless fragments. You are too weak. To be honest, your strength, let alone challenge Whitebeard. Even seven warlords of the sea is a bit unqualified. Roy looked down at Crocodile, who was lying on the ground and gasping, coldly.